After mastectomy, breast, or top surgery, it's important to ease back into gentle movements using the shoulder, chest, and arm. Doing so will help prevent lymphedema and maintain mobility around your shoulder joint. Before beginning this exercise routine, consult with your medical team to determine when you are safe to begin moving after surgery. These exercises are typically safe to perform once the drains have been removed, which is variable depending on the person and the surgery. Aim to do eight to 10 repetitions of each exercise, working your way up to three times per day, and hold each stretch for no more than 30 seconds. For this series of exercises, you'll need a chair, a stick or a towel, and a comfortable place to lie down. Let's begin. All right, let's start with shoulder rolls. You can begin sitting in a chair, hold your core, pull in and up nice and strong so you support the weight of your arms. You're gonna reach your arms down by your side. Now, if this is too painful, you can rest your hands just gently in your lap. We're gonna start by lifting the shoulders up and rolling them back and do that eight times in that direction. Inhale and exhale. Keep breathing as you go through this motion. And I want you to think about keeping your core engaged. It's always a good practice to do that. We'll do one more here. And then reverse, go the other way. So you go up and forward. If it feels like your range of motion is limited, that's totally normal and to be expected. Work small and work your way up. Two more here. One more. For the scapular squeeze exercise, you're gonna bring your arms up in front of you with your thumbs facing the ceiling, so pointing up. And then from here, taking a deep breath in, I want you to exhale and pull the shoulder blades back as if you're pinching a pencil between the two shoulder blades. And then reach forward, protracting, and pull back, retracting. Again, we'll do this eight times. And if it's more comfortable for you, you can always do one arm at a time. If you've had surgery on only one side, you might want to do one side at a time because your range of motion will be noticeably different. Exhale to pull back. Two more. Keep the core engaged. One more. Come back to a neutral and rest your hands down in your lap. For our next exercise, which is external rotation, you'll start with both arms bent at 90 degrees and your elbows at your side. You can always do one arm at a time if it's more comfortable or if it's easier for you to control the range of motion. From here, imagine pinning the elbows down and in so they aren't going to move too much. You're going to move your hands out to the side, rotating from the shoulder joint, thinking about opening the collarbone, tightening the shoulder blades, and pulling the waist in. And then come right back to center and do that again. So exhale, rotate out. Inhale in. Exhale. With all of these exercises, ease into them and think about making sure your head, neck, and shoulders are in alignment so that you can maintain a good function of that muscle without putting, if your head is forward, it's gonna pull funny on your neck. So keep the ears right over your shoulders. Let's do three more. One more time. Nice work. Next we have an elbow stretch. For this exercise, you're going to start with your arm at shoulder height. You're gonna turn your palm to the ceiling. And I like to start with a fist because we're actually gonna use a little bit of our wrist mobility as well. You're gonna bring the fist all the way to your shoulder. Let's do one arm at a time for this exercise today. So from here, inhale. As you exhale, you're going to slowly unfold your arm. And as you reach the full extension, open up your fingers and try to open up the wrist as well. And then you reverse all of that to come back in. Curl the fist and fingers, come all the way up to the shoulder. And let's do that again. 
We'll do four on each side today. Open, close, and come back to the shoulder. Do it again. It's not uncommon to start feeling tension at the lower arm or wrist when you have shoulder injuries. Everything has to work a little bit harder to stabilize because there's some instability and immobility at that joint. Open. And then coming back. Slowly bring that arm down and let's switch the side. So taking your other arm up to shoulder height, palm facing the ceiling, curl the fingers in, make a fist, curl it all the way to your shoulder, and then unfurl nice and slow. Again, never force your range of motion. Go only as far as you can without pain. Two more here. One more time. And come all the way back. Slowly bring your elbow down and we'll move on to the next exercise. For the seated neck stretch, if you're sitting in a chair like I am, it's really helpful to put one hand at the bottom of the chair. That will give you just a gentle amount of traction for your neck stretch. The other arm is gonna rest down by your side and you're just going to tilt your head away from the hand that's on the chair. So tilt your ear to your shoulder, breathing and hold. Remember to hold for no longer than 30 seconds and also keep that shoulder back. If you start to round that shoulder forward, you'll notice the stretch changes quite a bit. When you're ready to come out of it, gently lift your head, release your grip on the chair and switch sides. Hand under the chair, shoulder back, tilt your head. Keep breathing. One more deep breath here. And then bring your head up and release your grip. Next, we'll work on some rotation of the spine. Again, making sure that all of the joints around that surgery site are continuing to be mobile is really important to your recovery. So we're gonna take the arms to a genie position if this is comfortable for you. If this is not comfortable, feel free to just rest them here in front of your ribs. We're going to start by inhaling and on the exhale, twist gently to one side. Don't force the rotation, doesn't have to go too far. Inhale to come back to center and we'll do the other side as we continue. So exhale to twist. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, make sure you take your head with you. So look over that back shoulder. Come back to center. Rest your arms if you need to. Twist again. Back to center. Twist. Let's do one more on each side. Twist. Center, last time, twist, and back to center. The next exercise is arm lifts overhead. For this exercise, you're going to clasp your fingers because this will give you a little bit of support as you lift your arms. Think about holding those fingers right in front of your belly button. Engage your core, lengthen through your spine, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, slowly lift the hands up over your head, only going as far as you can without pain. And remember that as you continue to practice these exercises, you'll go further. So be patient with yourself, bring it back down. If you do have your full range of motion, feel free to reach all the way up. Be careful not to let your ribs pop. What, that, what I mean by that 
is lifting your ribs up this way, putting you into back extension. We wanna keep the back nice and straight in a neutral spine. Bring it all the way back down. Let's do two more there. Lifting the hands up. Inhale them back down. And one more. Exhale. Inhale back down. So let's begin with the arm down by the side. You can do this as a series of stretches holding about 10 seconds each time, or you can hold it once for 30 seconds. You'll bend away from that straight arm, getting a stretch for the obliques all the way up through the shoulder. Keep the shoulder blade back and come back up. Let me also demonstrate with the hand behind the head. This significantly increases the stretch, so use your best judgment bend to the side. Now you'll also start to feel it more in your serratus and your lats. And come back up. Finally, let's reach the arm overhead, bending to the side. Trying to keep your opposite hip on the chair. Come all the way back up, release the arm down, reset your shoulders, and let's do the other side. Starting with the arm down by your side, bend away from that arm. Turning your hand to face the front so the palm faces out will be a nice way to increase the stretch when your hand is down by your side. Come back up, bring your hand behind your head, if possible, and bend to the side. Breathe through your stretch. And let's do one more with the arm overhead. Breathe, lengthen, and then lift back up. Bring your arm down. For the first exercise lying down, go ahead and bend your knees, keep your feet flat on the floor, and just rest with a neutral pelvis. And then think about opening up your collarbone and sliding the shoulder blades gently down your back. From there, we're gonna reach the arms to the ceiling for protraction. Protraction means you're gonna round your shoulders up, reaching the fingertips up to the ceiling even higher, and then gently let them return back to a flat position on the mat. Do that again, so you reach up to the ceiling, and then gently lower the shoulders back down. Now, you can always do this with one arm at a time if you wish. If that's your choice, then what you would do is just rest the other arm down on your rib cage or on the floor. As you reach up, think about opening up the back, the upper back, and then as you bring your arms back down, try not to let gravity just collapse your shoulders down. That will be probably a little bit painful. You really wanna work with control here. So one more time, reach up and then control back down.
Okay, for our pec stretch, lying down, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because it's quite a stretch. So what I want you to do is start with your elbows to the ceiling and bring your hands behind your head. From here, rest your head and hands on the ground and you're gently going to open your elbows as far as you can without pain. Once they're in their fully extended and open position, you're going to bring your arms back up to center again. Let's do that again. Open. Use your exhale to knit the ribs together and feel the abdominals engage. Inhale back to the ceiling. Exhale, open. Inhale, back up. This time let's open and hold it for three breaths to stretch. Open. Hold it at the end of your range of motion and breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Again, in, out. You can always come out of the stretch if it's too much. Inhale, exhale. Bring the arms back through to center. Gently release your grip and bring your elbows down by your side. Our next exercise is snow angels. So starting with your arms down by your side, palms facing the ceiling, lengthen through your tailbone so you feel your spine stretch long in a neutral position. And then inhale as you slowly slide your hands up over your head, only as far as you can without pain. And then exhale to bring them back down to the side of your body. And we'll do that again. Inhale as you reach up. Take your time. Exhale as you bring your arms back down. Aim to keep your palm facing the ceiling the whole time. Inhale. Shoulders slide down as the arms come up. Exhale as you bring your arms down. And we'll do that one more time for demonstration's sake. Inhale. Exhale, bring it back down. Okay, for the next exercise, you'll use either a stick like a broomstick or a towel. I've used a hand towel that I've rolled lengthwise. You're gonna rest it right on your hips and then put your hands on the towel or the broomstick and straighten the arms out. From here, hopefully you've got a grip that's about shoulder width apart. Keep your abdominals engaged, inhale, and as you exhale, bring the arms up and back over your head only as far as you can go without pain. So you'll move it slowly and gently and then come right back down. Slow and steady is the name of the game when you're rehabbing. So make sure you give yourself time and grace. Be patient with yourself. Each day you'll get a little better and it will feel a little better. And bring it back down. Again, exhale to reach the arms up. Now there is a reason why I'm guiding you to exhale as you bring your arms up. And that's because as you breathe out, your diaphragm will contract and it will allow your ribs to come in a little tighter. If you inhale when you take your arms back, you run the risk of arching your back a little bit more. So I want you to think about inhaling when your hands are down and exhaling as the arms go overhead. That just gives your shoulder a little bit more support from the sides and center of your core. One more time. Inhale, bring it back up. Slowly bring your hands down. And next we'll do our standing exercises. For this exercise, we're going to do a bent over row with no weight. So you'll start with your feet hip distance apart. You can bend your knees slightly, just ever so slightly so that your hamstrings have a little give to them. And you're going to lean forward or hinge forward with a straight long spine. 
reach the arms down towards the ground, pull the belly in, and as you exhale, bend your elbows to pull straight back as if your elbows are going up to the ceiling. Inhale to reach them back down to the ground, and again, exhale. <sighs> Inhale to reach. Keep the spine long, the stomach pulled in, the legs are strong. Your hamstrings are also working here as a nice bonus. Exhale, pull back. <sighs> Inhale down. Let's just do that three more times. Exhale. Try to retract the shoulder blades as you pull your elbows up. So squeeze those shoulder blades together. Inhale. Two more. Pretty sure I just gave you a bonus one. One more time. Exhale. And reach down. Slowly return to your standing position and we'll move on. Now we're going to do a bicep curl with no weight. So you're gonna bring your elbows down by your side, open up through the collarbone, slide your shoulder blades down your back as if they're coming down into a gentle V. From there, hands face forward, and you're going to bend your elbows, curling your fingertips towards your shoulders, and then bring it back down again. And do that again, exhale. What we're doing here is trying to get your body back to the full range of motion in these upper body joints. Once you have that full range of motion and you can do this without pain, and once your doctor gives you the go ahead, you can add some gentle weight. So I would say start with two pounds, maybe a can of soup. And then from there, you can build back up. One more time. And rest. For the next two exercises, we're going to need an open wall. We'll start with the wall walks exercise. So turn to face the wall with about six inches from your foot to the wall. And you're gonna place your hands right up comfortably on the wall around shoulder height. From here, use your fingers to start walking your hand up the wall. As you progress, you'll go a little higher but take your time to get there. You don't need to go all the way up today. You can also do this with one hand at a time. Once you're at the top of your reach, slowly slide your hands back down, and we'll do that again. And as you continue each repetition, try to go one finger higher each time. Once you get up to the top, Gently slide your hands back down. Let's do one more here for demonstration. Walk your way up the wall. Keep your shoulders down as much as you can and then slide your elbows and hands back down the wall. Our final exercise is wall angels. And this exercise can be challenging even without surgery. So give yourself time to get there. If you need to wait on this exercise, that's totally fine. We'll start with your heels about six inches from the wall and you're gonna rest your back against the wall. Bring your hands to the wall. Now this alone might feel like quite a stretch. And if that's the case, then stay right here and breathe. You don't have to go any further than this. From here, if you want to progress, you're going to slowly slide your fingertips up the wall, coming over your head, just like the snow angels we did on the ground, and then slowly come back down. Now, as you get more mobile, think about trying to bring your head toward the wall also, so that you're not leaning forward as you do the exercise. But like I said, it's gonna take time. This is a tricky exercise for everyone. Slide back down. It also happens to be one of the best exercises you can do for posture, especially if you sit at a desk all day. Keeping your belly pulled in, reach the arms overhead, slide them all the way back down. And we'll do one more here. Reach up. 
and then slowly all the way down with control. Thanks for joining me today. I wish you a speedy recovery and a healthy journey ahead. Come back to Healthline for more information and let us know in the comments below if you have any questions. We're here for you. See you next time.